ordered I've got a little digital RPM gauge and this is a sensor and I have to mount you know, that little magnet right here somewhere around this area so uh, this sensor will be able to count the rotations I may have to build a or make a, a lip that sticks out underneath the pulley that um, will hold the magnet because the this this big magnet is right there so if I was to drill a hole right here and set this little magnet in it the magnet right here might interfere with the uh, ability for that sensor to, to trigger so this is the stick without the uh, center tube I left the uh, magnet that goes to the center tube resting above the uh, the magnet it opposes but right now I'm working on the sensor and the sensor requires a, a magnet so every time that magnet passes the sensor it counts it so I've mounted a little plate uh, to hold the magnet on the bottom of the tube so this is that uh, a very machined piece I've got my bearing here that's the uh, pulley um, got the grooves in it so I've got to mount this back into let go of that oh, goodness. got to mount this back onto the tube and slide the whole thing back onto that and uh, see if I can align the sensor and uh, maybe I can find some way to hook that up temporarily and uh, watch it work I think I, I showed this in the last video this is the center tube uh, this end goes to this and this end has a uh, shoulder in it to hold a, a tapered bearing and I've got my set screws installed in it now so that uh, that collar won't go anywhere um, so find my marks What, what was it? It must have picked up a screw. You know, line the, the holes up and I'll get those put together. Yep, I'm missing one of my button button head screws. bearing in here that keeps it centered on that. So put it on without knocking that out of place. And then the uh, and the magnet goes right inside that little recess on the bottom. And tapered bearing and the race that sits up here. You. So, very greasy. It's supposed to be. And now, better force it down. I don't want to force it too much because it's it's like a, a bearing in a, a vehicle. You get it too tight and uh, it creates resistance. So there's a there's a point in there where uh, so I'm shooting for maybe a quarter of an inch between the two. Uh, between the two uh, magnets. I'm 
And that way it keeps it nice and loose, nice and spinny. And we'll look at the spacing with the belt. Pretty tight. So this is what I'm looking at when I'm spinning that. Um, it could be a little bit tighter, but you know, the tighter you get it, the more friction you create. So don't want to over tighten, but the see where the uh, RPM gauge. I want to align those. Like that blue dot to be directly under this. Now this this magnet is just sitting on top of this to help hold the other one in its place. I've got that that recessed a little bit. Uh, it's not very not very recessed, so but it's glued in place with some Gorilla Glue. And I have that little magnet right here just to pull on it to keep it in that spot. So, I mean, it may, may work fine for a long time or it may uh, fling off. I don't know. That, that looks like that aligns pretty good. I'm not sure about the, the height here. So then we'll look at that in a second. I want to go ahead and tighten that to keep that from moving. Still moves all over the places. Okay. That looks pretty good. Aligned right over the blue dot. And there's plenty of room between the end of this and the pulley, which is what I was worried about. Uh, so now I have to adjust that, uh, align the height on the sensor to make sure that's uh, close enough. We'll take a look at that real quick. Okay, there's absolutely no instructions that came with either the sensor or the or that meter where it uh, shows the information. I did have to download a wiring diagram. Let's see if I can find a. But I would think that would be close enough. But I can always uh, make it closer or back it off depending on what I need to do. But that is this part of it. Now we have to look at the electronic end of it. Okay, I think we're all set up. In fact, I know we are because we just I just checked it. Found out that the magnet actually has to touch the sensor. It can't just go by it. It has to actually touch it. So, um, but anyway, we've got your sensor. Wire is going down. Now check my wiring. Okay, we got uh, got the uh, black wire connects to the number five. So you're reading this from the back. So this would be like this okay so black wire from from the sensor is connected here right and then the number four wire has nothing no and the number three is the blue wire that comes from this so we have the blue blue wire right here and then uh, the number two on here is ground so ground is right here and then we have number one is the power source for both this and the sensor so brown is hooked up let's see where where to go okay here we go this the red lead is the brown wire and the power wire to the box so we flip the box over like this 
make sure none of the wires are touching looks good and then we follow the wires over here and this is my power source this is my power board I think I've uh, I did a lot of videos on this early I'm still using it uh, I'm not using the, the water collector anymore I want to redo that one of these days and I have a whole new idea but anyway I'm going to turn on my uh, what was the sensor the temperature sensor to this is now powering my little uh, 12 volt plug-in thing so anything 12 volt if I want to heat up some water I'll plug it in here and then I put the other end in my cup so we we'll turn on power powers on and got the uh, reading there so we we'll do this a little bit Here we go. So, you know, it's kind of blinky on the camera. It didn't blink in real life. It's a zero. That's just two swipes. But if I uh, go ahead and take the time to go all the way around like this to get an actual RPM, we're, I'm just turning it at looks like 32 rpm right now so 24 to 32 so rpm doesn't seem like it's going to be very high on this but uh, that's the whole point is to be able to, to to set it up and find out what the rpm is compared to the power output so and i would be moving my uh, little uh, wind gauge on the roof somewhere close to it and then I want to check the RPM to wind ratio probably without a generator and then I'll put a generator on it a PMA and find out what it drops down to um, direct drive would be different this one uses the pulley system so uh, a PMA is going to make it run slower whether it's direct drive or belt drive uh, belt drive is going to put a little more a little more uh, resistance on it simply because of the belt and the idea of the two to one ratio of the pulley system so um, uh, before i disconnect the uh, rpm gauge i thought i might play with this a minute and uh, take off the belt and uh, spin that a little bit without that so so I just uh, loosened up that screw a little bit and that allows me to to move the generator in a little bit there goes the belt so uh oh are we not touching anymore All right, we aren't touching anymore, so maybe I'll just shove that down and tighten up that nut just a little bit. Whew, hard to do one-handed. Yeah, we're, whoop, that's too much. Too much. Just want to touch that sensor. see my plans for my next project so that, that may seem like it's pretty fast but that is around 100 rpm so hey okay well that was fun well that's that's that part i just wish that wish that didn't have to actually touch it But it is what it is, and I may get a different system eventually later on. Somebody can point me to a better uh, RPM gauge. 
or uh, yeah, better system to do that with. But anyway, it works, and that's that's what I was trying to accomplish today or at this very moment. So we're gonna have to think about it a bit and figure out what the next thing is going to be. Um, yep. Well, that's it for this video and I thought I might give you a hint as to what the next video will be. A little paint job. Uh, well until next time y'all take care.